Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Tuesday, March 26th, and then we'll see how things look for Wednesday, March 27th. Had a little bit of a down day. We're still hanging in there as far as just looking like a pullback. We do have a few more things that are switching over and looking a bit more negative that we want to keep an eye on. But for right now, it just looks like consolidation or a pullback. Things still remain positive in the bigger picture. But as I said, we just want to keep an eye on some things. We were positive for most of the session, and then it was right near the close when we saw prices drop off and then end up closing at the low for the day. Before I start, please know that I have a video posted on the YouTube channel that talks about the proposed program that I hope to launch right around June or so. I am looking at adding another video to that, possibly this week. Just to explain a little bit more about the program, and I, I kind of want to make it a series, and I'll make a playlist on the YouTube channel where I explain one aspect in one video and then another aspect in another video. So if that is something that interests you, please feel free to check that out. Let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a higher open. The futures were looking pretty good. They were positive before the session happened. And... It looked like, okay, we had a little bit of a down day on Monday. Maybe we'll have a little bit of an up day on Tuesday. And we were pretty much sideways. We opened above R1 at 52.26. Prices then rose up. And then this ended up being resistance at R2 at 5234. That was the high for the day. And it looked like, okay, we're just going to chop sideways for the rest of the session. It was not all that exciting. It, some people call this a, a volatility squeeze. This is when volatility really drops and things are just not moving all that much. And then it's like, okay, is, are we going to have a breakout to the upside or a breakout to the downside? Don't really know, but we did see a little bit of a break anyway at the end of the session. As the day went on, prices chopped between R2 and R1, with late day selling dropping prices below the daily pivot at 42.20. Excuse me, 52.21. We went below the unchanged level, and then we came down to S1 at 52.13. We went down to S2 at 52.08, and we closed slightly above 5200. So we're still above that level. We'll have to see if that ends up being some kind of an important level. It's not really important from a technical standpoint, but it is from a psychological standpoint. Financial media, they love to point out when we're above or below a certain level. A lot of posts, a lot of things that you read like to point that out. And then it can become an important technical level as time goes by, but really it's just a round number. We were down 0.28% on below average volume, so we are seeing that dropping off. We are still positive with our technicals, but as I've said a couple of times now, we're seeing some weakness kind of drift in, and this is kind of common. We'll have to watch what happens with price. Where are we in relation to support levels? Because things might shift over enough negative to throw <clears throat> this positive backdrop that we have into doubt, and that's what the market likes to do. It's like, yeah, yeah, buy the dips. Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a pullback. And then when it actually starts to happen, we see the climate begin to change. And it's like, okay, maybe this is a little worse than what we thought. It's easy to say when we're going up. Yeah, we're going to test the lower levels. We're going to pull back a little bit. But then when it's actually happening and you're looking at it in context of what's unfolding, that can throw some real confusion into the whole situation. And it's still mainly about inflation and interest rates, which has switched now to looking a little bit more positive. Now, inflation is still a problem. We're going to be watching the to see what's going forward from here because CPI and PPI were really strong week before last. But the Fed has now pivoted more to a positive stance, and the market likes that. But there's not an awful lot of buying coming in. We are dropping below average with volume, but we're not seeing a tremendous amount of selling either. It's not like we're hitting a resistance point and then bouncing in the opposite direction. We are looking overextended. And so some folks are locking in some profits in this holiday shortened week. Some comments that we can make, and this is the same statement that I made after Monday session. So far, it looks like a normal pullback as mega caps underperformed. And that happened in Tuesday session as well. 
on a short-term basis, we don't have a really long list. We're working off some of this short-term overbought or extreme positive condition. The CCI 20 is still looking extreme and our stochastics. And it takes a while for the stochastics to change because we have different charts on that same chart that we look at. And the longer term one can take a while to actually move. Intermediate term, also our list is getting a little bit shorter. We're keeping an eye on the oscillators. They were trying to turn back more positive going above their moving averages, but they're still giving us extreme positive readings. The Sean Trend Meter, the bullish percent index, it's still above 70 and it's hanging in there for right now, but it is extreme. And then our longer 10 period new high, new low study for the S&P, the 150 and 200 period move, simple moving averages are still extreme. This is the scenario. We'll see if there's any change to this. So far, it hasn't been changed over the last couple of sessions. The Fed is likely done raising rates and looks to cut rates possibly three times in 2024. The dollar was up and interest rates were down. So this could have given some support to stocks. They started the day by interest rates being higher and then they ended up finishing lower. It's more like interest rates and stocks have been moving more in tandem with each other lately. But with the 10-year yield, we closed at 4.23%. The yield curves that we follow are still inverted and have been inverted for a couple of years now. Sentiment did drop down. We're still positive. We only ticked down one notch to 67, where we had been at 68. But we're coming down from that extreme reading at 75 that we had just a few sessions ago. So the context is a little bit different as we're heading a little bit lower with sentiment. We are positive with our trend. The green line is still on top. I've changed this. The ADX is now dropping a little bit below its moving average. However, the ADX is still above 20. So we're in a weakening trending environment that is positive. We've had, what is it, three down days now. So yeah, our bias is negative, but I'm still keeping our momentum at mix. Even though we've had three down days, they haven't been big down days and we're still maintaining more of a positive backdrop. So I'm keeping the momentum at mixed. Economic reports that came out. This was at least on a list basis, this was the day that we see most of the reports coming out. Durable goods came in. This was hotter than expected, which put a little pressure on interest rates going up. It came in at 1.4%. They expected it to be at 1.3%. Last time it was down 6.9%. When you take out transportation, it was up half a percent, more than the 0.4% they had expected. Last time it was down 0.3%. The FHFA housing price index was down 0.1%. Last time it was up 0.1%. <clears throat> Sorry about having to continuously clear my throat here. The S&P Case-Shiller Home Price Index came in at 6.6%, a little bit less than the 6.7% they thought was going to come out. And last time it was at 6.2%. Consumer confidence, this ended up coming in weaker than expected, it was at 104.7. They expected 106.7. Last time it was at 104.8. Here's some charts. Durable goods on a year-over-year -year basis. Above zero and starting to go up. And this was a little hotter than expected. So it didn't really impact the stock market so much, but it did have an impact on interest rates. But that didn't last for the whole session. Here is when you take out aircraft on a year-over-year -year basis. Also above zero and advancing. On a month-over-month -month basis, we saw a decline last time, where this time it popped back positive. And here's the FHFA housing price index. It's starting to level out a little bit and actually went down, where housing prices had really been going up. And maybe this will end up helping the market. There's two real reasons why folks have been having problems buying houses. Number one is interest rates have been going up. Well, we could be switching back more to a positive interest rate environment, or at least they're going down. And that housing prices keep going up and up and up and up. Well, this coming down a little bit, it, it's not really going to change anything necessarily, but it could start the beginning of some kind of a downward trend <clears throat> to make houses more affordable. And then this is the year over year where we are still advancing when we look at it that way. Consumer confidence. First, we look at the blue line, which is right in the middle. That's the current reading right now. And I have to clear my throat again. 
I start these videos and I'm just fine. I take a nice drink of water. I even test my voice out a little bit and then I start blabbing and here we go with it. So we look at the blue line for the total reading for consumer confidence. When we look at how people are feeling right now, that's the purple line and they're a little more optimistic. But when it, when you look out into the future, that's the yellow line and they're not feeling as positive about things. Then ran across some interesting charts at IsabelNet as well as Twitter. There's a whole lot of numbers on here. It's like, blah, 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 blah. what we need to take from this is just the headline. Another clue that this bull market still has legs. This is the performance of the S&P when we're higher in November, December, January, February, and March. Now, we haven't finished March yet, but we've got a pretty good shot of being positive for the month. Going forward from here, the average and median are right around the 11%, just a little under 12 for the average and 11.2 for the median. And we're up nine months later at the end of the year, we're up 100% of the time. So on a probability basis, this is looking pretty good. This is similar to a chart that I showed yesterday. This is the S&P 500 secular bull market roadmap. This chart is a bit different, and then it goes back a little further, well into the late 1920s. When you take a really long picture look at the market itself, and other times when we've seen real longer term secular bull markets, and I said bear market when I should have said bull market yesterday or something like that. But if you rate that along times when we tend to go sideways and then when we really bust to the upside, we're about halfway through this right now. So this still has more room to go to the upside. And that's being confirmed by other things that, at least that I follow. Chris Shivako did a lot of research on this. He's been talking about this in some of his recent weekly videos that he posts on YouTube and some other things just kind of lend it to looking more positive for right now. And then the Magnificent Seven, they're back to greater than 30% of the market cap. Now this chart may be a day, couple of days old now. They've been under a little pressure lately, but still they have the biggest percentage of market cap. This is showing PE ratios looking forward on the 12 month basis where the US is up over that 20 level. We're coming in at 21.1. That's meaning that we're expensive even when you look forward. And that's being confirmed by other charts that we're seeing. And then we can compare that to the rest of the world where the US is clearly in the lead in this category. And what presents the biggest risk to markets over the next six months? Now, a week ago, I showed a very similar survey to this and it was inflation. Well, this is before the Fed came out with their more dovish stance. Now it's like maybe we're getting overvalued in the stock market right now and inflation has dropped back as being the biggest concern. Nothing's really changed as far as inflation for right now. We still have to wait for the next CPI and PPI report and PCE report and our other inflation reports that we look at. But now it's amazing how the, the perception can change just a little bit in a quick period of time. Found some interesting charts here. This is also going back into the 1940s. And here's the tweet that goes along with this. It says, if the 2013 breakout mimics the 1980 breakout, which I'm sure all of you remember, which it has so far, some big time generation wealth is coming by the early 2030s. So this is a longer term look. Even though we've had the 1987 crash, even though we had the COVID plunge, even though we really went in the toilet there from after the dot-com bust and everything that happened once we finally and the great financial crisis once we finally got going again it longer term it's still looking quite positive there's another one put out by mark ungewitter i believe he's connected with sentiment trader yeah this is a study to hear a significant number of industries are exhibiting positive momentum. Now, this could be weakening a little bit as we've been pulling back the last few sessions. But this is the percentage of sub-industry groups with a positive one-year rolling return. And this is just showing improvement here. Well, the SPX seems due for a breather, which it appears to be taking right now, breath momentum suggests further upside ahead. So 
the charts that we look at and that I analyze, and then these things are for right now anyway, are just showing that there's we're we're still maintaining that positive backdrop. There's another one put out by Jeffrey Hirsch. This is um the stock traders almanac, and you don't have to read through all these crazy numbers here. The tweet is really what I wanted to focus on here. It says the five month streak looks like a secular bull market. Not only is it bullish for April and the rest of the year. And then this is similar to what I said a moment ago, November, December, January, and February, when they're up, stocks have been in a secular bull market that extended for at least the next year. Um, note a touch of weakness in the second and third quarter in the worst six months and some huge uh, rallies in the fourth quarter. Last nine months of the year, up 11 times. Average gain, 11.9%. So we're we're looking, his, and he's a big um, seasonal guy. This is where I get most of the seasonal information from. So seasonally, this is still looking positive as well. And then this is a chart that I first showed in yesterday's video. This is a psycho guy. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Alan Remenick, Remenick, what have you. Don't know much about him. Just kind of ran across the video on YouTube. I wanted a little bit later in the video, I took another screenshot. He does a lot of cycle stuff. Now he's also into the Jupiter and Venus and Mars. And I, that's a little too far out for me. Um, I, I just don't get into that. But, you know, and the stars are aligning and everything. But, you know, there, there could be something said for the cycle. So I just include it here mainly for informational purposes. Where the, the red line, this was as of last Friday. So where we're at. So we pulled down just a little bit. And what this is suggesting is the 18-year cycle and the 12-year cycle are suggesting that we're in for a sideways pattern now that could last until about April 10th. And then we might see a little bit of a dip and then a little bit back of a, a push back up that goes into about May 23rd, at least according to these cycles. And then we might see some weakness after that. Don't know if you won't use this. Don't know if you think it's helpful. It seems to be lining up since we've been chopping sideways. And that's kind of what I've latched on to. What's going to happen going forward? Who knows? All right. Here's our intraday chart. We were looking a little better. It's like, okay, we were down a little bit on Monday. Maybe we're going to be up a little bit on Tuesday. And it did look that way until right at the end, we dropped off. We ended up closing down below S2. Here's the intraday chart also showing the late day weakness. And we're bouncing back up slightly in the initial overnight session. We're still hanging in there with the blue line above the red line, but growth and value did end up declining at the end of the day. We're still in a range here when we look at S&P growth of value on the intraday chart where it fell off right at the end of the day. You had somebody coming in just deciding, okay, they wanted to start their Easter weekend a little bit early. Let's go ahead and sell right now. End of day, we were down with growth. We were unchanged with value for the large caps. We were actually about even with the mid caps and we were actually up with small cap growth compared to small cap value. So we're hanging in there okay with the small cap growth to value ratio. We ticked back up a little bit and we're at the lower end of this breakout range for right now. And we're flat to slightly declining with the mid cap growth to value ratio, but this is still in a longer term uptrend. And we ticked down with S&P growth to value, but we're still in a longer term uptrend and we've been more or less range bound lately. Discretionary did come down when you compare it to staples, but it's still in a longer term uptrend. So these areas are not really showing a lot of strength, but they're not showing an awful lot of weakness right now either. The large cap growth ETF did decline a little over a quarter of a percent, but just coming off of recent all time highs. Our trend is more dropping below the moving average now. The green line is coming down, so it's no longer above 40 and looking rather extreme. Short term, also dropping a bit below the moving average with the green line coming down. Volume continues to drop below average. Sentiment, this will probably, and I, don't, I hate to say that because then if it's not, um, usually this comes out on Tuesday, and but it's, this chart is not updated until I do the video. It's not available until after Wednesday. So, and so that's why there's a little bit of a delay here. When you look at the VIX on the line chart, we w did go back up a little bit with the line chart as well as the bar chart, but we're still underneath 
this series of higher lows that we had been seeing. We picked up just a little bit with the volatility of the VIX, but we're still getting very, very low readings as far as volatility is concerned. We're still seeing kind of an extreme reading here with the SKU index. Again, this measures at out of the money options. It's similar to the VIX. And this is just that the market is expecting some kind of a big move. This could be some out of the money type hedging that's going on using put options probably that could be producing this really high reading right now. We're coming up, the market will be closed on Friday. It's a three day weekend, it's Easter. Who knows what crazy things might happen. So you might see some, some kind of hedging going on ahead of that, or there's some event that could happen before we end up closing out the week. The VIX continues to drop overall with the momentum as it's been going down, as stocks have been going up. We declined a little bit here with the equity put call ratio. So we're not seeing hedging from this perspective right now. There's actually, we're going down as far as the number of puts versus the number of calls being purchased. And we're rolling over just a little bit, but still kind of going up with our five period simple moving average of the equity put call ratio. Really not seeing much of a change here with the volatility risk premium. We're just more at the higher end of this band. It's when we break out above the band or break below it. That's when we really start to take notice. The advanced decline line, yeah, with the down day, we were a bit lower based on price and volume, but this still is holding up internally. We're pegged at the top with our five period moving average of the new highs, new lows. We are seeing that drop off. We're starting to go flat to slightly lower with the 10 period moving average. We're still hanging in there okay with the advanced decline ratio. We, we haven't really broken this series of higher lows when we measure the ratio. This is a little bit of a concern. We're dropping below the moving average with accumulation distribution. This is based on volume as well as price, and this tries to measure what the smart money is doing. We're also dropping negative now with the check in money flow. This has been a concern for a while. And now that we're actually going negative and the moving average is going down, we just want to be aware of this. This is also another smart money indicator. We're dropping more negative with the check in oscillator. So we're coming down just a little bit with the advanced decline line studies. When we look at the NYSE common stock, a little bit of a decline with the S&P mid caps and small caps as well. Here's our daily chart where we came up to this pivot point right here that active is overhead resistance we have been coming down but we have not broken below this pivot point it's a little hard to see because now we're drawing in the pivot points for april here on the bottom we are still below average with volume the cci 14 has dropped off that's a little shorter term where the 20 it's falling but it's still above 100 so it's giving us an extreme reading we're watching the 20 period moving average study both the simple and exponential moving averages if we continue to go down we'll be wondering if this will offer support we're continuing to go down with the 20 50 and 200 period moving average study and this is just on the price of the s p itself this doesn't look internally we did decline but we're still positive with the force index we're no longer extreme in the short term with the stochastics or the intermediate term we're rolling over but still extreme positive in the long term we're not extreme with our standard deviations channel. We're at the lower end of the plus two channel. If we see more weakness, we might come down to the plus one channel. The important takeaway from this is we're still above an advancing midpoint. Intermediate term, we did see a, a bit of a decline here with the balance of power, and it's turning slightly more negative. I wanted to bring up the double and triple exponential moving average study based on 50 periods where we're coming down to the blue moving average. That's the double, and it moves a little bit slower, where the red is the triple, and that moves quicker. This shows that the intermediate term trend is very strong when the red line's above the blue line, but the fact that we came down to the blue line, it, you could say that's offering some kind of support. If we continue to fall further, that could, at some point, cause the red line and blue line to actually cross over negative. And this is interesting. We've been seeing a series of lighter blue bars here with the go no go system. They switch back to darker blue. Hmm, go figure. We're still looking okay with our highest high value. We're above the advancing midpoint. We are looking a little more negative with the TTM squeeze since we're changing to the darker blue. Ease of movement did decline a little bit, but we're still above zero. We're flat with the Arun indicator. We're still dropping below 
zero with the S&P McClellan oscillator. So that's short to intermediate term, slightly more negative. We're still looking at this longer term negative divergence here, wondering if that's going to be dealt with. The further we get away from this, the more relevant or irrelevant that will become. So we're starting to turn down with the summation index based on price as well as volume. We're dropping below zero with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. Also, we just want to keep an eye on this longer term negative divergence. So we're just barely starting to turn down with the summation index based on price as well as volume, even though it's pretty hard to see that. We did turn down with the Swinland trading oscillator based on price and volume, but we're still above zero. We're kind of coming back down to the moving average now with the PMO. We're starting to cross over negative based on price, but we're still positive based on volume. We did see a decline with the PMOs that are rising. We're starting to go back down with the buy signals. We're also flat to slightly declining with the PMOs above zero. We continue to be neutral with the Elder's Impulse system for the S&P. We're still positive with the parabolic SAR. This is going to be a pretty big signal. If we see more weakness and the dot comes in on top, that's going to possibly change things more negative. The slope is flattening out right on the green line here. So it's barely extreme positive, but it's really not showing a lot of movement. We're turning back a little more negative with the MACD where it's actually starting to go back below its moving average. So we were seeing a bit of an improvement with our oscillators. Now they're starting to show a little bit more weakness. The longer term oscillators really aren't changing all that much. We're still above all the plotted moving averages here. And we continue to hold up as far as the bullish percent index. We're not seeing an advance, but we're not really seeing a decline either. However, we are above 70. And if we start to come down, that would turn this more negative, And we would actually see a sell, a sell signal if we drop below 70. We're continuing to go up, though, with the NYSE bullish percent index. That's showing some broad market strength right now. We tick down a little bit, but we're still above 50 with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. We're dropping below 50 with the money flow index. It's been a while since we've seen that. So that's turning more negative. We did decline, but we're still above 50 with the ultimate oscillator. We declined, but the green line's still on top of the vortex. We've also been seeing a gradual weakness with lower highs with the vortex. We're turning down, but not looking extreme positive or negative with the RSI based on 14 as well as nine periods. Also note that pretty much since the beginning of November, the RSI, both of these charts have been pretty much always above 50. It has when we look at the 14 period and it's only dipped below 50 one time. We did come down, but we're still above the moving average with on balance volume. After giving us a little stronger reading, we are pulling back when we look at stocks inside the S&P above their 20 period moving averages. Also a little bit of a decline with stocks inside the S&P above their 50 period moving averages. But we're still looking okay when we look at the 100 period moving average study. And we're looking okay with the 200 period moving average study. The copy curve, which had been trying to turn more positive, it's right back down to its moving average. So it's kind of more slightly negative now. We are falling a little bit with the Sean trend meter. We're no longer extreme positive, but we still are pretty extreme positive. Looking a little more negative here with the hike in Ashi, we've seen a couple of doji candles here where we're opening and closing right about at the same point. We're still positive with the Kegi chart, but now we're pointing down. The Ranko chart thinks we're still partying on, and we're still looking positive with the three-line break. So we're getting some mixed signals here. We did drop below the blue line here. This is the, the other trend line that I drew in here. The red line was when we were just really screaming up. Then as we were pulling back and going sideways, that's when I drew in the blue line. We're below that now. So the next area that we'll be watching is the 20 period moving averages. And we it lo does look like we're into a new cycle now. Whether that's gonna actually change into a different environment or not, we're still waiting for that to be seen. We're still positive here. This is a weekly chart of the S&P. We're still above this R1 level. And if we do fall, we'll be watching to see if that provides support at about the 51.10 to 51.11 level. We're coming down, but we're still extreme with the 150 and 200 period simple moving averages. We're still positive though with the Keller market model across all the different indexes and all the different time frames. We did switch back to being negative again with the PMO signals in the short term. It had crossed over positive. 
And the PMO is what I showed just a moment ago, and we are crossing below the moving average, so that's why we're getting this new signal. And it looks like Canada, they're still partying away up there. They crossed above 22,000, and then we had the NASDAQ right after the open crossed above 16.4. But other than that, there were no other alerts that were triggered. We're still hanging in there with the equal weight when we compare it to the S&P 500 weighted index. We were down slightly with the mega caps underperforming a little bit when we do a ratio between the S&P and equal weight S&P. We came down a little bit with the Dow, but we were virtually unchanged. We were down 0.08%. The diamonds still continue to be neutral. And this is hard to read, I know, but we're still above this pivot point here. That's It's starting to be drawn now for April. But the other pivot point down here is what I've also been watching for the NASDAQ. We came up above this pivot point that is acting as overhead resistance. And now we've fallen back down below that. It's also hard to read here. We did hit overhead resistance with the NASDAQ 100 with this pivot point, and we've been coming down slightly. We still continue. Actually, we've changed from being positive over to neutral with the QQQs with the Elder's Impulse system. We were showing some improvement with the momentum for the NASDAQ 100, but now it's rolling over and back on top of the moving average. The QQQs will also be watching the 20 period moving average here. That acted as support. When we saw a bit of a downturn, we haven't reached that yet. So will we get a bounce up off of this moving average? If that doesn't hold, then we'll be watching the S&P 500 20-day moving average. Small caps were down slightly and continue to chop sideways. <clears throat> We've switched from being positive over to neutral with the Elder's Impulse system for the small caps. We're still above 50 with the RSI. When we look at the Russell 2000 small caps, we're still seeing a longer-term uptrend. And we're pretty much flat now as far as momentum. The mid caps are declining slightly, but not showing an awful lot of weakness. We came up to this pivot point. That was overhead resistance, and we've been pulling back since. We continue to be neutral with the mid caps when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. We were up with Google, and this is actually starting to show some improvement. We're, we're getting above both moving averages here. So I'm probably going to stop showing this chart if we see a bit of a bounce here. I was starting to show this chart when we were dealing with the 200-day moving average. And now that we've cleared that and are coming back up and we're staying above those levels, this chart is showing some improvement. But we're still seeing some weakness in Apple, which is now in a downtrend. We're still, well, we were up with Tesla, even though it closed at the bottom of the bar. It's, it's not really a good sign sometimes to have a really solid open and then spend the rest of the day coming down, even though it was up almost 3%, but it's still in a longer term downtrend. NVIDIA was down over two and a half percent. It looked like it was trying to break out and then it pulled back. The FANG index pretty much been going sideways. We did decline slightly and we're kind of at the higher end of this recent range that we've been in. The financial sector was positive and continues to be in an uptrend. The dollar, we're seeing a golden cross now, and the dollar's been going back up. This could pressure stocks. Then looking at the world index compared to the S&P, not really seeing a big improvement. We were flat with the 10-day correlation. We are seeing a little bit more of an improvement with the 50-day correlation between the two. We were down with the 10-year based on yield. We were up with the 10-year based on price, and we're coming right back up to the 50-day moving average. And then looking at growth of value, where we did turn down slightly, we're below a declining moving average. When we look at the Qs to S&P, we turned up, but we're st also still below a declining moving average with discretionary to the S&P. And we showed a little bit of a drop off when we look at large cap growth versus large cap value. So the large caps are showing a little bit of weakness. We're trying to get back up to the moving average with the mid caps. Actually saw a little bit of an improvement with the small caps, but we're still below a declining moving average. We're still looking okay here. This is a broad market measure of the five period moving average of the highs minus the lows. We're still above zero. <clears throat> We're still looking quite positive with our 10 day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. And this staying camped up here is actually positive and gives us more of a positive backdrop. So what's our outlook for Wednesday? The markets will be closed on Friday in observance of Good Friday. The technicals are positive, but consolidating. I haven't changed the wording because nothing has really changed here. We're still above this overhead resistance, which since we're above it now, we're 
that line is below us. If we fall back, we'll be watching to see if it provides support. And seasonally, uh, it, roll the dice. My goodness, it just doesn't seem to be sticking to seasonal patterns right now. We will get the MBA Mortgage Applications Index, so not a big day for economic reports. We want to keep an eye on all the crazy things going on in the world, especially falling bridges in Maryland. My goodness. And then uh, we'll have another day on Thursday where we do get some rather influential economic reports, but then the market will be closed on Friday. And one thing that I usually don't talk about are crude inventories, oil inventories that comes out usually on Wednesdays. Seasonally, we are looking a little bit more positive on March 27th. We're positive with the Dow and the NASDAQ where we're neutral to positive with the S&P. And looking at the 19th trading day of the month, we just have one more to go after this. We see a little bit of an upward move when we look at the green dash line during an election year. And we're wondering, are we in here anywhere at all? There's a real disconnect between what the S&P has been doing and what seasonality historically has done. Shown right here. See how the green line's been going up? Now, this is as of last Friday's close. But the black line is the seasonal pattern that we've been following. And there's just a really wide spread between the two. This also is showing that same thing where seasonally what's happening and the red line is what has been happening. Wednesday tends to be the most negative day of the week. So be aware of that. We're also in that period of time that Tom Bally has found, according to his research, that we should be seeing a bounce going into the end of the month. It'll also be the end of the week as well as the end of the quarter. So the warning signs, the equity put call ratio, it's still going up. Yeah, it's flattening out a little bit, but we want to see some more follow through with that. The check in money flow, the check in oscillator, and the money flow index have all turned negative. The copic curve, after looking more positive, is now turning back to negative. We're below both of those short term trend lines on the SP 500. And then we do have our negative divergences that we've been watching. These are more longer term. We need to figure out what's going on in the shorter term right now before we focus more on the intermediate term. And these are more intermediate term divergences that we've been seeing. The momentum is now, it was looking better for the NASDAQ 100, but now it's looking a little bit more negative. It was turning more positive. And we, I don't know what to do with seasonality right now. Also, the parabolic SAR continues to be positive. That's on our positive list here. The vortex is positive, even though it has been weakening. The bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100 is above 50. Small and mid-cap growth, still positive. Large cap growth, still doing okay. The financial sector was up and is positive as well. So our conclusion, and I haven't changed this, and if we don't see a really big move, there's really no need to change the, the stance of where we're at. We are positive. But for right now, it looks like we're consolidating, possibly pulling in or going into more of a pull pullback. We're still above that longer term overhead resistance. And who knows what to think about seasonality right now. So that's what we're watching. And we're still above this shorter term and longer term overhead resistance with the S&P. Now, that could be in jeopardy a little bit. But so far, those areas have been holding. In the intermediate term, we are positive. We're working off some of our extreme positive conditions, but we're still looking a little extreme positive. We're still extreme positive in the long term with those long-term moving averages, but we continue to be positive. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. Have a really good day, and I will talk to you in the next video.